Shall we now once again return to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, and we shall read verse 20, verse 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And the title this evening is, Are You Running Towards the Hope of the Resurrection? Are You Running Towards the Hope of the Resurrection? To the unbelievers, we ask, Do you have the hope of the resurrection from the dead? And we looked at this part in the morning. But to the saints, saved by the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must ask, are we running towards the hope of the resurrection? And this is what we are going to look at this evening. Christ has destroyed the power of sin, Satan, death, and the grave. And by doing this, Jesus Christ has become the only one that has brought immortality to mankind. Jesus Christ is the only man who living in the human flesh have died and have risen again to have a new body, a spiritual body, a glorious body. After Paul the murderer was converted to Christ by the power of Jesus' resurrection, Paul had no other focus in mind. He had no appetite for sin, nor for the things of this world. He says in Philippians chapter 3, from verse 7 onward, if we may look into this, verse 7, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And look at verse 14. I press forward, he says, I press forward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, to attain the resurrection of the dead is the highest calling every man is called for. The first Adam died because of sin. His body dissolved in the earth. Remember, man, dust indeed you are, and to dust you shall return. This was a curse of the sin that came upon all mankind because Adam and Eve disobeyed God and died. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ, became the first man to rise from the dead. The Word of God calls Jesus the firstborn from the dead. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it is written, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by many sins by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ 
shall all be made alive. Every man dies and remains in the dust until he or she is called to judgment and then enter into second death, the everlasting death in hell. But Jesus has brought hope of immortality. Jesus has brought hope of the resurrection of life by rising from the grave. The Lord Jesus Christ became the hope for all mankind to rise from the dead, even after a person is dead. So, the Lord Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And those that have heard today the message of this hope must desire to live forever. They must come to Christ so that Christ makes them alive here and now from their spiritual death and give them the hope of the resurrection from the dead. But those whose sins are forgiven and Christ has given them new life, they now on from the depth of their heart that this work of salvation, which is the power of his resurrection, now they must run towards that day to fulfill that they will rise from the dead. If Jesus, dear friend, was not risen, then the Holy Spirit would have never been sent into the hearts of the people whom God saves. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sin. Now the most important thing that the saints in Christ must come to understand is that after salvation, after being born of the Holy Spirit, they must press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what we read in verse 14. Now, what is this high calling of God in Christ? It is to attain the resurrection of the dead. For this purpose, God brings salvation to people that he has called to make his own. The purpose of God to save us through Christ does not end with our salvation. It is only the beginning. Salvation qualifies us to run the race to attain the resurrection of the dead. After salvation, we no more walk according to the ways of the world, nor according to the desires of our flesh, as verse 20 says in Philippians chapter 3, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our conversation is in heaven. What does this mean? Our authorized version uses the word con conversation uh, to mean quite a few different things. For example, it means for conduct or our manner of life. But here it means government or citizenship. After our salvation, after we are born again of the Holy Spirit, our citizenship, our government is of the heaven. We walk according to the laws of Christ. Christ becomes our king, our emperor. We begin to follow the divine law. The Lord Jesus Christ becomes our king in all spiritual matters. Our way of life is governed by, then by 
him. He rules over us. Therefore, any laws that are passed on this earth, which goes against the government and the citizenship of heaven, are to be rejected. The apostles and the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ that were born again of the Spirit of God took this very seriously. Anything that would hinder their progress towards taking hold of Jesus and attaining the resurrection of the dead like Jesus did was to be rejected even at the point of laying down their lives. What mattered most of all for the immediate disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ was the resurrection from the dead. The resurrection from the dead was a central part of the disciples' faith and life. It is a central part of the life of the church. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, And he, that is Jesus, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. You see that? If there was no resurrection, the suffering and death of Jesus Christ would be in vain. Anyone could say, okay, you say Jesus suffered and died for us. So what? So what? What is the benefit of all this? Okay, he died that our sins should be forgiven. Well, that is good. But so what? So what? I'm going to die one day anyway. Anyway, I'll be finished one day anyway. This is where the benefit lies in the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not die and lie in the ground forever. And even if we die in Christ Jesus, we shall be raised up and live with Christ our Lord forever. So we wait with eagerness for the return of our Savior and King. And since the administration, the government of the people of God is in heaven, we look for the return of the Savior, our King. Why do the saints wait for the Savior from heaven? Look at verse 21, Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. This is because he shall change a vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That's the reason why we wait for his return. This is the hope the children of God carry in their hearts. Death has no power over this hope. This body of sin this mortal body has to be put away so that we be clothed in the glorious body, fashioned like the body of Jesus. We wait for the coming of Jesus who will change our vile body into his glorious body. So what was the body of Jesus like after his resurrection? Well, we are given some glimpse of the body that Jesus had and the body that we will that that the body will be ours what the body will be ours as Jesus's body just a glimpse of it when the lord jesus was on the earth he gave his disciples some idea of a heavenly body and he took three of his disciples on a very high mountain we are told in matthew chapter 17 verse 2 and Jesus was transfigured over there on the mountain before them. He was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. These human eyes were able to see the Lord Jesus transfigured 
in his glorious self. This sight and experience must have never left their mind. What an amazing sight to have. After the resurrection on the first day of the week, which we call the Lord's Day, when the doors were shut and the disciples were in a house because of the fear of the Jews, they were terribly afraid that they also might be arrested and killed. And so they had shut the door and remained inside. And we are told in John chapter 20, verse 19, Jesus came and stood in the midst. And he said unto them, Peace be unto you. Jesus, with his new resurrected body, came through the closed doors and stood in their midst. The resurrected body has no physical barrier. We will one day be given such a body. And we are told that many other signs Jesus did in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Now, the disciples, we notice, could recognize Jesus to be Jesus with a new and glorious body. And we too will able, be able to recognize one another after our bodies are raised up and given new resurrected bodies. Isn't that wonderful? Such a hope that we will continue to have fellowship with one another in the presence of the glorious God, our King. We are also told that Jesus ascended into heaven. The new body given after the resurrection seemed to have no limit on earth or in the sky. It can defy all natural forces, whether it be gravity or whatever. The Word of God tells us that the Lord shall change a vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And the word of God tells us that we shall be as he is. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. It is difficult for us to imagine in our human mind, even in our human imagination, what exactly, how exactly we will be. But we know that it will be glorious, glorious. And once we are raised up to be with Jesus, the Word of God tells us in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8, the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. He will wipe away all tears, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. So there will be no pain, no sorrows, no death. Such will be our lives with the new body given to us. Such is the hope of the resurrection, dear brethren, from the dead. Such is the high calling God has called us for. We must keep this hope of the resurrection from the dead before our eyes. No matter what happens, we will go through troubles and persecution and affliction and all manner of things. We must be ready, especially in these days, time and days, when we see the government constantly trying to provoke the church, the saints of the Lord. So we must be ready as Jesus was, as the apostles were, as the prophets were. They were always ready because they did not look on their lives here, but in the heavenly city and the glorious body that they will receive. If we do so, we shall fear no death. If we constantly remember 
of our resurrection from the dead. We will have no fear of death, dear brethren. Like Paul, we will say, to be with the Lord is far better. To think about this high calling, to live under the government of the Lord, will only purify us, for we shall be wanting to be like him. As Apostle John says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, And every man, every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself. What hope is that? He talks about the hope of the resurrection of the body. Every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he, that is Jesus, is pure. Why? Because only the pure, with a pure body, with a resurrected body, will able to enter into his kingdom. For flesh and blood cannot enter into his kingdom. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, how thou hast built us up with thy word, and not only with thy word, but what thou hast spoken, thou, O Lord, have accomplished it, even the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord our God, there is no way that we can, O Lord, be lost, because thou, O Lord, have kept us and will keep us through all these teachings, these doctrines that thou hast given to us, so that, O Lord, we put our faith in thy word, and that, Lord, we please thee in all things. O gracious Father, we pray that we will able to look into all that thou hast taught us, and that, Lord our God, we will put our faith in thee, and not doubt and see thy blessings each day. O Lord, even when troubles and pain and afflictions and the attacks of Satan be poured upon us, O Lord, we will become victorious. O gracious Father, help us, O Lord, even today, having learnt about this high calling, having learned to keep, O Lord, that we should keep the resurrection of our bodies before us and run towards it with everything that we have, that we put aside and put behind everything and run to achieve this. And it can be done only through thee, O Lord. But thou hast called us to run this race by faith, by grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.